In this video, I want to explain how to code up a very simple iterative image reconstruction method, which is known as MLEM, or Maximum Likelihood Expectation Maximization. And the equation is given in the bottom right-hand corner here, and I'll talk you through it as we go along. But first of all, to show you where we're headed, um, what we'll be doing then is creating a true uh, test object, a phantom, known as the Shep Logan phantom. We'll create a simulated sinogram, and then using only that sinogram, we will reconstruct uh, the object iteratively. And so this will progressively look more like the true object when only using uh, the sinogram data. Okay, so let's get underway then in Python. First of all, then we're going to need to access that uh, true object, the Shep Logan Phantom. And for that, we'll be using the scikit uh, image processing library. And so we'll create the ground truth object, the Shep Logan Phantom. And we'll want to take a look at that. And so for that purpose, we will use uh, the matplotlib uh, library. And we'll want to be able to um, have updating figures. So we'll put interactive mode on. And now to visualize it, uh, we'll set up a, a figure with axes, um, which will be composed of uh, six subplots. That's uh, two rows and three columns. And the overall figure size uh, is 20 inches wide and 10 inches uh, tall. So with all of that in place, we can now um, do an im show um, in order to visualize that true object using a grayscale a color map where black is zero and white is the maximum value in that true object. And we'll plot that in the uh, first row and first column counting from zero in Python. And we'll set the title to be the object. Now, um, in order to keep that plot uh, visible on the screen, um, we'll need to, to use a plot.show with block uh, is true. To, to make sure that that uh, stays on the screen so we can actually check that this is what we expect to see. So let's uh, take a look at the code so far then. So that just confirms that we've created a Shep Logan Phantom. And uh, from the scikit image library, we see that it is uh, 400 by 400. And so before going further, we'll uh, rescale that uh, to a smaller size, um, just for the speed purposes of this uh, demonstration. And uh, so there we're going to import uh, some functions, uh, again, from the scikit uh, image library. So these are a set of transforms here. We will be using the radon transform in a moment. That's going to be for the forward projection, uh, the matrix A. And we'll also be using iRadon with no filter to do the transpose of the matrix A here. We'll come to those in a moment. But for the moment, um, I just want to focus on the rescale because we want to just uh, resize uh, that phantom to be uh, a dimensionality, uh, dimensions that are more useful for our purposes here. So I'm just going to say the true object then is just a rescaled version of that true object, which originally was 400 by 400. And I'm just going to basically halve those dimensions. So we get 200 by 200. And also you'll see here as well, I've decided to set an activity level, just changing the amplitude of the phantom. That's effectively controlling the radioactive concentration if this were to be a simulation of a PET uh, scanner, for example, a, a PET acquisition. So that's why I'm going to use that scaling factor in there. But of course, um, that's not actually necessary to demonstrate um, what's going on here. OK, so now that we have uh, the, the true object, um, what we're going to do is uh, forward project that to generate a simulated sinogram data simulated sinogram data. And uh, for that, we will be using uh, the radon transform from the uh, scikit uh, image uh, processing library. So here it is defined here, we've imported it. And so what we're going to do is apply the forward projection, that's the matrix A, onto now in this instance, it's going to be the true object. So not a reconstructed image X, um, but rather a true object, which is the Shep Logan Phantom. And we're going to do that for a number of uh, azimuthal viewing angles. And uh, we're also going to do it um, over the entirety of the square uh, array that the phantom is contained in. So we're going to need to, we'll need to define those azimuthal uh, viewing angles, um, first of all. So what we'll do there is we'll use a uh, linspace um, from the NumPy 
uh, sort of standard uh, library for Python. So we need to import that as well. So import NumPy as NP. And uh, then using um, Linspace from there, we're going to start uh, from zero degrees and go up to 180 degrees. And we're going to do one degree um, sampling on that. And we're not going to include the endpoints. This will go from zero to 179 in steps of one degrees. Um, and so we're going to call that the azimuthal angles, which we'll be using for the radon transform to forward project um, along with those different angles. And that will be our so-called sinogram. So it would also be good uh, to take a, a quick look at the sinogram to make sure that that is as we expect it to be. Um, okay, so that's going to be uh, the first row and the second column. We're going to show the transpose of the sinogram just so as the radial um, coordinate is along the horizontal axis and the viewing angle is uh, vertical. Again, using a uh, grayscale and we'll label that as a sinogram. So let's take a quick look to see if we've managed to uh, do this correctly. And um, just pull up the plot here and we can see there's the Shep Logan Phantom. Now it's uh, correctly, well, it's just been rescaled to a more convenient size for our purposes, 200 by 200. And then the sinogram now has 180 uh, viewing angles, the azimuthal viewing angles. And uh, we've got an increase in the number of radial bins here because effectively that's now looking across that diagonal. We're not going to be using a circle here. We're going to be assuming that we've got actually got the entire square field of view. OK, so um, let's now press on with seeking to reconstruct from that uh, true sinogram. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all then is uh, define uh, our reconstructed image. And I'm going to call that um, an MLEM reconstruction. And again, using uh, NumPy here, I'm going to create uh, an array filled with values of one. Now, the algorithm that we're using, shown in the bottom right hand corner here, is a non negative algorithm. So we can't put uh, negatives in there, and we certainly can't also initialize with zero values for the true object. Um, or rather for the reconstruction. So what I'm doing here is basically taking uh, the shape of the true object. Okay, so that was the 200 by 200 and creating uh, an array uh, filled with ones and I'm calling that the uh, reconstruct reconstructed image, MLEM rec. And um, okay, so that's basically uh, giving us XK here. We're going to start off um, with iteration uh, zero, if you like, this is um, iteration zero. So let's call that uh, iteration zero. So in other words, k equal to zero. And uh, what we'll be doing in each iteration is, first of all, uh, forward projecting uh, that reconstruction. So um, I'm going to indent that for the moment um, because we'll be looping over this in a second. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. This is a x k. So this corresponds to a forward projection of um, the MLEM reconstruction at iteration k. So that's, if you like, a um, x superscript k in terms of um, the formula at the bottom right hand corner here. So that's the forward projection. Um, now, the as we can see, to actually implement this algorithm, we're going to need to take the uh, measured sinogram data and uh, divide it by that forward projected image. Okay, so first of all, then let's do a, a ratio. So this is um, a ratio sinogram, which is equal to our simulated uh, sinogram divided by our forward projection. And because uh, we could have zeros in there, I'm just putting a sort of a safety offset in there um, that could be uh, improved upon. This is just a demonstration of the algorithm here. Um, and then once we've got uh, that ratio of the measured sinogram, so that's sinogram divided by the forward projection, which is AXK, we now need to apply a transpose. And so that's the transpose of this discrete radon transform. Now, what we'll do for that is use um, iRadon from the scikit image processing uh, library. Okay, so let's uh, set that up now. So we're going to go back here and we're going to create uh, a correction image, which is um, iRadon 
with no filter um, so that means it will just do the transpose of A rather than the inverse the inverse would be used for example in filtered back projection again we're doing it for the entire square image here we're defining it over those uh, set of azimuthal viewing angles that we set up earlier and um, we're, we're doing this back projection this I radon on that ratio sinogram now you'll notice here that i've already got a division by something that i've called the sensitivity image that's this a transpose one which is just uh if you like a measure of sensitivity in the uh, reconstructed image in other words how many back projected lines um, are impacting upon each pixel in the reconstructed image xk so we call a transpose one the sensitivity image okay so we do need to uh, define that really before um, we get into the reconstruction. So let's, um, to do this, this back projection of ones, we need to create a, a sinogram filled with ones, first of all. So uh, let's do that here. So a sinogram filled with ones is um, the same shape as the uh, true sinogram here. And um, what we're going to do with that then is, of course, uh, just uh, back project them and so what we can do of course is just reuse our back projection formula here so sensitivity image here is just going to be uh, the back projection of the sonogram field of ones for all the different azimuthal viewing angles again the whole square being considered no filter because we want a transpose on uh, the, the the sonogram field of ones okay so that should give us uh, the sensitivity image Right, um, maybe actually before uh, proceeding further, let's actually take a look at what is going on here. Um, so let's uh, visualize if we can. So what I'll do first of all is uh, take a look at uh, the forward projection of our current um, uh, reconstruction, which of course was just initialized with uh, values equal to one everywhere. And so this is just that forward projection and I'm going to call that the forward projection of the reconstruction and I'll use im show for that so that allows us to visualize the forward projection uh, be good to also take a look at the ratio sinogram okay so we can um, also uh, visualize uh, that sinogram as well okay and I'll display that in the the first row and uh, the third column looking at the ratio sinogram and uh, just uh, use uh, a title of ratio sinogram there. Um, now for the uh, forward projection, I'm going to be showing that in the second row and uh, the second column. So just next to the uh, visualization of the reconstructed image. OK, and so, of course, we should also be visualizing uh, the reconstruction as we go along. And so for that purpose, I will um, use let's take a look here i'll use um, a version of that to take a look at the reconstructed image itself so that's just uh, mlem recon okay and we'll display that in the second row and the first column and we'll call that uh, mlem reconstruction okay um so this should now uh, be in a position where we can uh, take a look at our progress so far. We're almost there, actually. Uh, we, we haven't yet iterated, of course, um, but we're just getting all the key building blocks um, in place. So let's uh, save this off and take a look at where we're up to. OK, so this is where we're up to at the moment. This is our initial reconstruction. This is just filled with ones um, because there's no other value here. It's just shown uh, as black throughout here. This is being forward projected, which is revealing this does have uh, values um, greater than zero here. And um, this is the forward projection of the reconstruction. Um, I've got to rename that, of course. Uh, that's actually the, the sinogram from the true object. And then this is the ratio of the sinogram from the true object divided by the forward projection of our current reconstructed image, which is there. So we've got to um, get these titles correct here. So let's just do that. And that will get the titles put into the correct positions. Right, so um, let's check where we're up to now. So we have the sinogram. We have the uh, reconstructed image, which is XK. 
we have a sinogram of filled with ones, which is that vector of ones there. We have the sensitivity image, which is just the back projection of ones there. Uh, we have forward projection of our reconstruction, so that's AXK. We have the ratio, which is M divided by AXK. And we have um, the uh, correction image, which is A transpose, A transpose applied to the measured data, divide the sinogram divided by um, the forward projection. Um, and then we're also including in that the division by A transpose one, the sensitivity image. Okay, um, so that overall uh, collection of terms there can all be now applied uh, point by point multiplication with um, MLEM reconstruction, the XK. So we should be able to do uh, our next um, update of the image now. So we'll do that here. MLEM reconstruction is equal to MLEM reconstruction multiplied by that correction that we've just calculated. Um, so with all of that in place, um, we should now be ready to iterate. But um, again, before going further, let's just take a, a, an update look at what is going on with our code so far. Okay, so this is the, the current situation, pretty much as we had it before, but now I've got the box labeled correctly here. This is the reconstruction. That's the sinogram we're reconstructing from. Um, MLEM reconstruction is forward projected here. We take the ratio of the sinogram to the forward projection of that reconstruction. There's the ratio, which will be back projected, and we should visualize that back projection as well. Um, divide by the sensitivity image and then multiply by um, the reconstructed image. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, correction image. So I can display that in the um, second uh, row and the third column, and I'll call that the back projection of the ratio sinogram, in other words, the correction factors in image space. Um, okay, and then the reconstruction will be updated, and uh, maybe we could even update that, just visualization here, just be a bit lazy. Let's take another look at it there. Take a check of the code again, and we should have a whole iteration of our reconstruction algorithm now done. And that's exactly what we see here. There's the true object. There's one iteration of our reconstructed image. That'd be X1. In other words, we start off with K equal to zero. So this is the first update shown in that bottom left box here. Um, and the one before that, which was K equal to zero, that was forward projected here. And there's the, the measured data M uh, divided by AXK and that's the ratio there, which is back projected. This is A transpose operating on that, back projected here, divided by A transpose one. And then all of this is then multiplied by what was X uh, zero to give X one, which is our first update as shown there. Okay, um, so it could also be useful um, to uh, number the uh, iterations. So, I can maybe show that as follows here. So what I'm doing is just um, using the same line as I included at the end there, but now also including the iteration count number in anticipation of me setting up an iterative loop going over iter, iteration number. And because we'll be counting from zero in Python, therefore I'm adding one to it here. Um, and so that will give a, an updated um, title. So let's call that MLEM reconstructed image um, with the iteration number shown there. Okay, so this is all now ready uh, for iterating. Um, so we can start here and say for iter in range, uh, for example, 20 iterations, um, then we could just repeat uh, this loop here. Okay, this will all need um, indenting. Okay, that's done there. Um, and uh, we'll also need to display as we go along and uh, also do a little pause in there as well so we can uh, take a look at each of those iterations. So let's uh, run this overall reconstruction now. Okay, so now we have um, the iterations unfolding here. This is getting forward projected here. We're getting the ratio, which is over there, back projecting the ratio, dividing by the sensitivity image, multiplying. And you can see here quite clearly that bottom left uh, box there is giving uh, an improving reconstruction 
of the data from the sonogram and it's ever more agreeing with that true object. So that's how we do that algorithm uh, just in regular Python in that way there. Uh, we could also um, take a look at this in a Jupyter notebook. That could be a, an interesting extra um, example to use here. So let me see if I can um, get a, a, a Jupyter notebook open here just to see what we would do uh, for visualization purposes as well. So what I can do then is include um, the same libraries, the same modules here. Um, and instead of now doing an uh, interactive mode on for the for the plot, uh, what I'll be using instead is um, IPython, um, which is an interactive uh, version of um, visualization for Python. So there we are using IPython uh, for the purposes of an updated uh, image display. Um, the rest of this code uh, we can largely copy across now. Um, it's just that we'll update um, these stages at the end here. So let's get back to our um, Jupyter Notebook using Go Google uh, Colab. So those are our imports from before. We'll add on a, a code block here. And so this is all that we've just coded up. Um, this can stay as it is here. Um, and then again, now here at the bottom, instead of using plot.show and plot.pause, um, I will still use the pause, but instead I'll be using um, functions from IPython. And so I'll be using display the figure and then clear output weight equals to true. And then hopefully we'll get an updating um, set of images in our inline display in our Jupyter notebook. So let's uh, check that this is all running. Let's do the imports first of all. Okay, it's just initializing. Okay, that's now gone ahead. And let's check this code, see if this is working. Okay, so we can now see very clearly uh, exactly the same process as before. Uh, we've got the reconstructed image being shown here. These are the iteration numbers. Um, so we do get a bit of flicker here in my very simple attempt at animating. Uh, but there's the true Shep Logan Phantom. Here are the iterations um, increasing, being forward projected. Ratio of the measured sinogram to the forward projection is shown there. Back projected, divided by the sensitivity image. And then we're getting updates in that image there. So I hope uh, this video has been useful to you. It's uh, showing how to code up this very effective, very robust iterative reconstruction method known as MLEM um, using a Jupyter notebook as well as just um, standard Python in an editor and then uh, launching from a command terminal. Thank you very much for listening.